Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm really excited to be showing you this um, Valentine's project that I've been working on. I'm gonna go step by step how to make this little cute animatable guy, render him out and everything. The from the default cube to the final animation, everything. Um, if you guys do want this um, file, you can go to my Gumroad page where I have all of this these project files available for a dollar. But I do wanna quickly announce before we get right into the tutorial is that I have my Patreon up and going and even at my most basic tier that I'm making available, you guys will be getting, um, if you subscribe to that, you'll be getting all of the YouTube project files that I have, that when I, when I, when I make them now, I'm gonna be putting them on here as well. And that's gonna include some assets and some shaders and stuff. And you can check out some of these other tiers here as well that I'd really recommend. But anyway, let's get into the tutorial. That's what you guys clicked on this for. So let's make this cute, adorable little Valentine's guy here. Okay, so for brand new scene, open up in Blender 2.83. We're gonna go ahead and select our default cube, then go Control I to inverse the selection, the X and delete. So we just wanna get only our default cube in the scene here. If you hit one on your number pad, you're gonna go into front orthographic view, as you can see here. So in front orthographic view, select the cube and then hit tab to go into edit mode, or you can come here manually and just go into edit mode. And what we wanna to do to make our workflow a little bit more efficient is we wanna half this and mirror it. So we're gonna go Control R, hovering over here, so Control R, and then just click, and that's gonna insert that cut over here. And with that still selected, these vertices, we're gonna go V, and just left, right click to let go. And now we have two pieces. So what we're gonna do is select the one here on our left and go Control L. So select any one of these vertices, go Control L, it's gonna select all of this mesh geometry here, and go X and delete these vertices. So now we have one half of our cube, we're gonna come here to our modifiers, and to speed this up, we're gonna add in a mirror, we're gonna enable clipping and the clipping, just make sure that when we do move this, um, it doesn't split apart at the seam. So it's one object. With that done, hit free on your number pad to go into your right orthographic view. Go A to select all the vertices, then S and then Y and just scale it on the Y to about this much. Okay, that's really good. Now what we're gonna do is go Control R and click in a new bit of geometry here. And then what we're gonna do is go into our wireframe. So hit Z and then go to wireframe deselect these and then if you select this vertice here and you bring it up you're gonna um, get this shape here and then you can go control R add in another cut here and then we're gonna select this guy here bring it down and all we're doing here is just moving these um, vertices around to create this geometry so just like this and then we're gonna go control R add in another cut over here and then select this vertice and go G bring it in and then what we're gonna do is bring this guy into here. And then we're gonna go here, select those vertices there and go E, just to extrude it down. Go in your front view and just go G and just bring that in like that. So just make a love heart. Now there, uh, the nice thing about this tutorial is that love hearts are such a stylizable thing that you could make it however you want. So you can make any kind of shape love heart. As long as it resembles a love heart, it'll work just fine for this tutorial. And we can always come in here later and add in a bit of extra geometry. But for now, we're just gonna go add another modifier and this time it's gonna be a subdivision surface. So now tab out of edit mode, go to your solid. So this is what we have. And to make this look a little bit better, we can also just, you can't, you don't have to do this part, but if you go back into your edit mode and you select these vertices down here, you go to your proportional editing, click that to enable it, and then go S, Y. You can kind of roll your middle mouse wheel and move this little thing around, this gizmo, and make it like um, just a little bit thinner at the bottom. So I'm gonna go with something like that, looks good to me. And you can go here to your object and just enable um, shade smooth. And then you can also just come here to your modifiers and just under your subdivision surface, just make the viewport render two and set the render value here to three. So now we have it smoothed out a bit. And then we're gonna come in, grab this Geiger G, Z, just move it up to about here. That'll be fine for now, it doesn't have to be exact. And you can come in here now at this point and add as much detail, move things around as you want. Um, one thing that can make this look a bit better, if you go Control R, you can add in a loop over here. With that loop selected, go Alt S, or just disable proportional editing. So with this loop selected, go Alt S, and just pull back and that's gonna scale that out like that. That would help make it look a little bit better as well. I guess I think that's enough at the moment of our love heart. So let's just quickly go give this a material. So I'm just gonna give it kind of a new material, make it kind of reddish. And I'm gonna come here to my 
um, viewport display and I'm just gonna make it reddish as well so I can see that material and with that done I'm gonna go shift A I'm gonna add in a new type of mesh and it's gonna be a circle I'm gonna go RX90 hit enter so we got a circle here move it to the side scale it down and then tab into edit mode and with those vertices selected if you go control F control F and you go down you can go grid fill and it's gonna automatically add in these vertices here so tab out of edit mode with that guy still selected give it a mirror modifier good to work with mirror modifiers because it just saves us time and then click on the heart here so click on the little mirror object click on the heart and now it's using the center point of this heart as a reference so now all we have to do is go G just bring it in here go to our right orthographic view in G and just bring it forward I go to your front view again so here we have the eyes and for now let's just give them a nice black material so go new you can call it something if you want I'm just gonna call eyes I'm gonna make the base color black obviously and just make the viewport display black as well and with this one we can just bring the roughness down as well make it nice and glossy okay so that's what we have for now what we can do is add some basic modifiers to this guy as well so go to your modifiers tab on top of the mirror modifier we're gonna add I mean below it we're gonna add a subdivision surface then we're gonna come in and add a where is it a shrink wrap then we're gonna click on this little target object select the heart and we're going to come to our offset and just drag it out just a tiny minute little bit like so and then on top of that we're going to throw a um, solidify so go to the solidify right over here and then this, this is where you can come in and just drag this thickness value into the negatives a little bit to bring that eye out and if you don't like the sharpness what you can do is come here to your subdivision modifier right here and just click on this little arrow and bring it down to the bottom of the stack so now the subdivision surface is the last modifier in the stack and we can now go to this object and just enable shade smooth so here we have our eyes and you can mess around with them a little bit later but for now we're just going to model a really basic mouth in our character here so click on the character tab into edit mode and the mouth is optional you don't have to do this part but I think it just adds a little bit of character to the character so what we're going to do is hover over these faces here and just go control R add in another loop cut like so and then go control R over here and add in a lot of loop cuts so we just want a bit of extra geometry and then what we're going to do is go to our face select select this face holding and shift this one this one and this one and then we're going to go E S and extrude it in like so and then E S and extrude it in one more time and then we're going to go E to extrude it in and then E one more time and then we're going to scale that up in there that face just like that very basic then we're going to go to our vertex select go to our front view enable our proportional editing again and then just select this vertice here and just roll our middle mouse wheel and we're just going to bring this mouth geometry in a bit doesn't have to be perfect because we're doing a very basic kind of character with very basic animation requirements so just something like that and you can come in here and add in a different material in the inside of the mouth so an easy way to do that is just go to our face select just select these faces in the back of the mouth go control plus just to grow the selection and then you can come here to your materials make a new material go assign go new and we're going to make this kind of like a darkish kind of purple and we're also going to do that in the viewport display you don't have to do that part I just kind of like a different color inside the mouth okay so our little dude is coming together so this is in our um, object mode hit A to select everything then G Z just bring him up a little bit like so and what we're going to do now is add in his little lollipop stick so we're going to go shift a we're going to go to our mesh add in a cylinder scale this guy down g z bring him up to here and then tab into edit mode with our face select enabled select this bottom face go g z and bring it down you can disable the proportional editing as well just g z bring it down to about here with that face still selected you can go Control b and just make in a bevel and then roll your middle mouse wheel to add in some geometry so something like that would be nice okay so here we have our lollipop stick you can grab this face at the top here and go X and just delete that face as well so delete faces okay um, maybe go to your edge select just go shift alt select this loop here and just go G Z bring it up a little bit more um, what we might have to do is just tab out of edit mode grab our little character here and if it's showing over here what you can do is just come in here to your edge select 
select an edge here and just drag it forward a little bit maybe or even just scale this geometry out here if you want just to make it kind of fit so we don't see that okay so that's much better grab our little stick here again go object and shade smooth so as long as we have something that looks like this you don't have to worry about the back you can fix that if you wanted to drag this geometry out a bit but we're not going to be seeing it in this particular animation so i'm not too worried about it kind of already messed it up again okay just like that is fine so you guys can fiddle around as much as you want i'm going to leave the heart at this for now and we can be I think we're ready to get into our animation. So maybe I'll just quickly add a quick scene so we can just do some basic lighting. So I'm gonna go Shift A, just add in a mesh plane. I'm gonna scale it up to about here. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, grab these two vertices at the back, holding and Shift, go to my right orthographic view and then go E just to extrude it to here and E extrude up to there. So just a very basic backdrop. Go back to object mode and then Give this guy a modifier. Let's add in a subdivision modifier. Make the the render amount bigger and also the viewport. Go to object, enable shade smooth. And let's give this guy a new material and make it something like, I don't know, pink for now. And then we can go to our render settings here. Make sure it's Eevee, then enable ambient inclusion and enable screen face reflections. Now let's add in a very basic camera, shift A. We're gonna go to a camera. Go G, Z, bring a camera up to here. Go to your right orthographic view and go G, Y, and bring your camera out to here. You then hit zero to go into your camera view. Then if you go to your camera options here, you can set the focal length to 120. That's something I like to do. And then go here to your output settings. And I like to make the mention 1920 by 1920. So make the bottom one 1920 as well. And let's have a look at this. So if I go Z and go rendered, this is what we should see. And at the moment, there's no light in our scene, so we can go Shift A and just add in a light. I'm gonna add in an area light. G, Z, bring it up to here, go to our light settings, increase the size and increase the power to as much as you like. I'm gonna go 500. And if you rotate it forward a little bit, you can see it looks like that. And then you can go Shift D, add in another one a little bit more forward if you want. You can even go Shift D and bring one here from the side, like that. And we can go here to your world settings and you can make your world a lot lighter. And to make it look a bit better, you can even come here to your render settings and go to color management, and you can make the look of it um, high contrast. So if you go into camera view now, you should see this. Maybe I'll go with medium high contrast. Okay, that looks good to me. So here's what we have so far. We have a little character, our scene, and I don't think we gave this lollipop stick a material yet, so I'm just gonna go and give it a material. Go new, and we're just gonna make this a little bit of an off-white. That's all. And I can see here the stick is intersecting with the floor here, so I'm just gonna grab the lollipop stick and go G, Z, and just move it up like that. Okay, here we have it. I'm, can, I'm pretty sure now we can get into our animation. We have everything made in our scene. Maybe just bring that in a bit. Okay, animation, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get into some really basic animation here. First thing I'm gonna do is select the character here and holding in shift, select both of the eyes. And then still holding in shift, we're gonna select lastly, this little lollipop stick. Then we're gonna go control P and you're just gonna to go to set parent to object and keep the transform. So now everything is parented to this one little guy here. And let's go to here to our key, our frames. We're gonna set our end frame to 80 frames. Don't need too many frames for this animation, which is quite nice when you render it out as well. So 80 frames. Go to your front view and what we're going to do here is make sure this slider is on frame one and on frame one we're going to rotate this guy a little bit to the side like so and then g just move him over here roughly so then we're going to hit i to insert a rotation key and i to insert a location key and then with that done we're going to click on this keyframe we inserted so click on it and go shift D and just slide it to the end here to frame 80. And then what we're gonna do is drag our little slider to the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. And then we're gonna go R and rotate it to the other side and then G and move it here a little bit like that. Okay. And if this floor is still intersecting, what you can do is just grab this plane, this backdrop and just tab into edit mode and go control R add in a loop cut and just double G to slide it back. So that should take care of that intersection problem there. So let's go back into our front view. 
So what we've done now is, okay, so we have just this hole. So go back to frame 40 in the middle. I didn't insert a keyframe that time. So just R, G, move it to here. And now go I and insert a location and I and insert a rotation. So now we should have something that looks like this if you play it like that. Now let's do some really basic stuff here with the eye. So we're gonna select this eye and we're gonna come here to our, um, the, the click on this little, what's it called? Object data properties and then go to our shape keys, click on the plus and then click on it one more time. And then we're gonna take this key one, we're gonna drag the value all the way to one then tab into edit mode. And then we're gonna go S, Z and just scale that down as much as we can like that. And then tab out of edit mode. And what we're gonna do is go to our front view on frame zero, on frame zero, we're gonna make this value all the way to zero on key one and hovering over it, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe. Then we're gonna select this guy here and go shift D and just also slide it to frame 80. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier, but this time what we're gonna do is only drag it up maybe a few frames, maybe to frame um, three. And then frame three, we're gonna go and drag this value all the way up to one and go I to insert a keyframe. Then we're gonna click on our first frame again, go shift D and just drag it a little bit past that third frame. And then what we're gonna do is select these three here, just these three keyframes, go shift D and just move them wherever you want. And you can scale them up a little bit by bringing this slider into the middle of them and going S to scale them apart a little bit to make that blink a little bit longer. So what you should see is this and then another quicker blink, and then it just repeats. Cool, and now we can do one more thing just to give his mouth a little bit of movement. And we're gonna do this really basic. So go to your, select your character mesh here, go to your object data properties, and we're gonna add in the shape key for this guy as well. Add in another one, and on key one, I'm gonna drag the value all the way to one and then tab into edit mode. And make sure our proportional editing is enabled. And then we're gonna grab this mouth vertice here in the corner. And just go G and just slide it back a little bit and then bring this mouth down here a little bit, just like that. Just to make some movement in the mouth like that. And then what we're gonna do is go to frame zero. On frame zero, we're gonna make this value zero and hit I and hit enter. Then click on this keyframe and go shift D and drag it all the way to 80. And then drag this slider to the middle. It doesn't matter, just roughly here in the middle. And then you can drag that value to one and go I. And if you want to, you can come in between here and just create some sort of random look and go I. Just make it whatever you want, maybe something like that. So we should see these, this kind of movement in the smile. It'll, as, long, as long as the first um, keyframe and the second keyframe are the same, um, it will be loopable. So we now have our materials, we have our scene, we have a backdrop, we have a character and our animation. Now let me show you how to render this out. So what you do is go to the output settings here. Then you can go to your output, click on the little folder, select your desktop or wherever you want the video to be, go accept. Then you can take your file format options here and you're gonna make it FFmpeg, go to your encoding and you're gonna set the container to an MP4 peg or an MP4 as it's otherwise known. And then go to your output quality and you can make this high quality, which will be fine for a little short animation like this. Then go file and just save your scene. I'm just gonna call mine two because it's part two of this tutorial and just save as. And now you can go render and render animation and it'll render this animation to your desktop. And let me see if I can find my original one here, which I showed you guys in the beginning. Here it is. So this is what it would roughly look like. So mine was a little bit different, but make it your own, um, do something cool with it. Um, you can even make different kind of characters, different kind of lollipops. So I hope you guys like this Valentine day um, special tutorial and share it, like it. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to um, Patreon. I've got a lot of really cool content under. It might be worth checking out some of my um, tiers.